Malekum, and thank you for joining us this fine Shabbat morning, and we are going to be looking at the book of Ibrahim, or Hebrews, and we're going to be doing a bit of, bit of multitasking, and I just welcome you to Shabbat. Just a second ago, we had such a 
a very interesting vehicle pull up that was very official. And as it turned out, for the Army Corps of Engineers, he was a state game warden, and we had a discussion about, of course, the Book of Hebrews. Now, my conversations normally end up quite interesting. But first, we need to look at who the author was. Now, most that have gone to the cemetery, the seminaries for the theological degrees, they don't know some basics. If they read all the way through the book of Hebrews at the chapter 13, he gives some addresses, the author of this book, and he names some names, and you can tell it is Shoal of Tarsus. of Tarsus, who was a student of the school of Gamaliel. There were two different rabbinical thoughts. There was the Shemai, and the other side, which at the time was Gamaliel. They were the master of masters within the rabbinical, but were they of the line of Kohanim? or the Levites? Or did they receive their priesthood from another authority? Now, maybe on the road to Damascus, when Sheol of Tarsus was going there with orders from the Sanhedrin to do business on the, the believers in the Messiah. How dare them! And he went to persecute them. And on the road, he on his horse, and a light, and he apparently was not on his horse for long. And he looks up at a light, and he would have said, I don't know, is that you? And the voice says, no, it is Yahshua, whom you persecute. You must read the book of Acts from start to finish, and you need to understand it in a context that those individuals knew the Torah. They studied their parashahs. They studied their Horus. They lived in the scrolls, and on Shabbat, they met at the synagogue, and the synagogues were controlled by the mystery Babylon at the point when the Messiah came, in about the 4,000th year from light. Right now, we are towards the end of the 6,000th year. So, from the time of Adam through to Noah, and then from Noah through Shem and his line through to Abraham, and from Abram, the sons, Yitzhak and Yaakov, and the blessed sons of Yaakov, who were the twelve tribes. And then when they left the land of Ur, I'm skipping some things, but they went into the land of Egypt because of a drought. And the eleven sons, through their brother, who was Yehoseph, down a pit or a hall, fall, it's the Fe and the, the Lamed. It's to pour out. We'll get to that 
Paleolithic study another time. So you have about a thousand or so years from the, the time of creation in Bereshit to the flood. That was the time of Hanuk. And Hanuk ruled and was a great, great grandfather to a mighty nation that walked righteously while the Canaanites ruled the world in debauchery and, and wickedness and violence. And the, the flood came as promised as a judgment to carry away the uncleanness of what was going on that Yahweh said not to do. From the creation, from the creation, Adam and Hava, they lived in the garden. And it's Adan, it's a court or a place of grass and of trees. It's a courtyard. But there's also the courtyard of judgment. That's Edom. It was made perfect that Adam and Eve had everything. He, Adam, had the authority because he was created in the image of Yahweh. And Hasatan, Azazel, Sabirikolatan Ra, Thor, Adonis, Zeus, G-O-D, has been the deity of the nations, the Gentiles, and controlled with an iron fist a new world order. And if you look back into ancient times, that new world order and their practices and their obelisks and their sacrifices and their atonements are counterfeits. Now, Sheol of Tarsus, who was on the road to Damascus, and he... met the Mashiach. The Mashiach found him and blinded his eyes because Paul at that time was blind. He could see with his eyeballs. He knew Torah. He had been taught by the finest school or order of Judaism. He was of the tribe of Benjamin. He was an Israelite. He was not of the tribe of Judah. There's so much history that I would love to cover with people. But time is of an essence. That is why it's so important. For instance, we may skim over and maybe just hit highlights from the book of of Hebrews and if you take that one scripture and take it out of context and then you change the names that give that scripture authority you cannot change the author's name the authority of the book his name is yud heh vav -He. where is the Congregation of yud heh vav -He in my community or your community. If we have freedom of religion, my friends, why is he, his, the Creator, conspicuously missing? It is because the deity of the nations has persecuted the name Yahweh and his Messiah, Yahshua, and those that commit themselves to righteousness, trying to live what this word says, his commandments, his mitzvot, his right rulings, 
and the enemy, the adversary, Ha Satan, does not want you to keep those commandments. And when you break those commandments, the deity of the nation then has authority to punish. My friends, at the great white throne that is still in the future, Baruch Hashem, the Messiah, comes. But the great white throne is a one answer judgment. They will say, Oh, L-O-R-D, did we not pray and prophesy in your name? The answer is no, they didn't. They prayed in the name of another, J.E. Zeus. And Yahweh, the father of the Messiah, Yahshua, has absolutely no affiliation other than creating the damn being. They are fallen. They are the Nephilim. Oh. And Saul of Tarsus is pointing out in the book of Hebrews the Messiah had to come and fulfill the Leviticus and Deuteronomy and Shemot and Bereshit. It is all foundational for the rest of the scriptures. And if you change the name, the covenants, do they become null and void? Is ignorance bliss? Ignorance of the law, if you're speeding and you didn't know that you're speeding, you will still get a ticket and probably pay a fine. That's why, as a believer, a humble person and nothing of guilt, I have a official from the State Department and he's checking and I visited with him and I shared the good news of the name and I asked him if he knew Miss Jade Helm and he had no idea and I introduced him a bit what is going on and then directed him back to the name because as we've studied just this week, Matthew 24, and the things that the Messiah spoke to his disciples that shall come to pass, those are happening as you hear the waves come in and go out. We're in the time that men's hearts shall faint because of fear of the waves. Nation shall rise against nation. He talks about wars and rumors of wars. There is information and there is misinformation. And all of it has very little truth. You cannot change the proper nouns. Sheol of Tarsus who wrote the majority of the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament, the covenant. It is a renewed covenant and is based on the commandments. The Messiah said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And when we don't, we have a name that we are to confess, restore his name. Yahshua, who came in his father's name, Yahweh. He spoke this to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Sanhedrin. And he said, if another comes in his own name, him you will receive. In fact, they print that other mighty one's name right on the green monetary system that has been the standard for the last 60, 70, 80 years. No, the wealth goes way back. It is very occult. And the one, as we know, is Satan. He is an eternal being. And he was cast as a punishment into the midst of the earth. We live in the time of Revelation. 
and those beings have been released. YouTube videos on UFOs and unidentified flying objects is at an absolute all-time high. The last week, thousands of sightings. Now, I believe those beings that we see here on Earth are terrestrial, and they are from within the Earth. They are demonic beings. And then there are the extraterrestrials that perhaps they are the Kodesh Melakim, the Watchers that Hanuk spoke about and Jude spoke about and many times like the, an, the announcement of the Messiah where Gabriel came and visited Miriam and Yosef and announced the good news of the Messiah. My friends, we need to repent and we need to turn back to this word. The book of Hebrews is so very specific because Paul knows, Saul of Tarsus knows the Torah and the prophets so well. In the first chapter, there are seven times that the Psalms are spoken verbatim. And then you have from Exodus that says Yahweh shall have a son in his image. And that is what the whole book of Hebrews is based on. And Sheol of Tarsus, he was a lawyer, a lawman for the law. The law is Torah. We live in a time where there is no Torah. The churches have thrown it out saying that they have been fulfilled, nailed to the cross, and therefore they don't need to turn back there. And they say they're saved by grace, lest any man shall boast in a name that starts with J that was not his name. People, wake up. Pray to Yahweh and His Son, the Messiah, Yahshua, because all of the promises that He made in all of the Bibles, translated, it's true, it is a true story. But if you translate the meanings, and then you change the proper nouns, it's a perversion. If in this book, it has the Kodesh name, which meaning a Bible. If you look up the word Lord, L-O-R-D, there are over 2,880 some odd uses of the word L-O-R-D. That means, with the restored names, the scriptures, just with that one word, L-O-R-D, has 2,800 and a some odd truths. You can't change the name, and that is what Paul, he, he had not even conceived that that could be a problem. Hasatan has manipulated our languages from the, the time of Babylon. And he has his orders of the temple builders, and they do what he says. They are very Luciferian. They are in the shadows. They meet behind closed doors. And they manipulate industries and people and country against country. Paul, Sheol of Tarsus, is speaking about the Messiah, and it must be understood who he was, the suffering servant that came, as all of the prophets foretold. They also foretell of the Lion of the tribe of Judah, it's Yehuda, Yahweh, 
and that army he has a remnant in the midst of wickedness turn to Yahweh turn back to the Messiah turn back to the scriptures we don't have much time the uh, jadish color helm uh, axes are about to come down on us the sword is coming up from the earth and the arrows are pointing down it is a upside down pentagram it is that rider on the white horse that carries a bow that is a counterfeit the real Messiah who shall come who comes on a white horse from the heavenlies with an army of his sanctified Kodesh set apart ones how do you become one of those ones you study and you guard and you honor what he has asked us in the commandments all 613 commandments not all of those apply for instance some apply to only men and some only to women so the ones that apply and the second commandment in the Torah the first one is be fruitful and multiply that hasn't passed away that hasn't been fulfilled the second one the second commandment in Genesis or Bereshit is I am Yahweh I have created the heavens and the earth in six days and rested on the seventh sanctified it and set it apart as Kadosh for you and for all generations to come this is an everlasting covenant and the Gentile churches worship on the first day of the week and they scoff at those who try to keep the the Torah or Shabbat and they do not understand it and they say we're saved by grace I submit that they in their worship to G.O.D. are serving the one that Moshe and all of the prophets and the Messiah and his disciples said do not follow after be separate, kadosh, a peculiar people, by keeping the commands, the mitzvot, and walking with seat seat. And when people ask us, we have His light that will shine truth and love of the Messiah Yahshua, the resurrected one who lives within us. And greater is He that's in me than he that's in the world Baruch Hashem Shema Yisrael Yahweh Eloheinu Yahweh Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Malkuto Leolam Ba'ed Hear, O Yisrael, Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh Echad, Baruch Shem Kevod Malkuto Leolam Ba'ed
hear Shema, Yisrael, Yahweh, Elohim, Yahweh Echad. He is the Echad, the One. And what is that? He is the Kodesh Echad of Yisrael. Yahshua is your name. And there is no other name to get to the Father but through the Son. The Son is the door. You cannot change the door. You cannot change His name. If you change His name, you try to climb onto the path from some other way. And you can think you're one of His sheep, but you do not know. We do not know in this generation the Master's voice, the Master. Who is that? That is Yahshua ben David Rapha. He is the keeper of the sheep. And in Yochanan chapter 17, as we spoke just a few days ago, what that prayer was to His Father in heaven, that as He and the Father were Echad, one, that we, the believers that have been entrusted to Him and to keep His commandments and join with Him on the Sabbath day and to keep His Kodesh name, Hashem, in the highest name and to speak it, Yahweh, Yahshua. Yahweh is salvation, is the translation of the meaning of the, the one and only Son, Yahweh, Son of Miriam, born in a Sukkot. He was circumcised on the eighth great day of Shimi Acharet of, of Sukkot. My friends, He's returning. He has promised that he will return. But he and all of his disciples and all of the prophets also gave warnings that we must heed. But you cannot get those warnings if you don't turn back to the Torah, if you don't read the complete work of Daniel or Yishiyahu or Yirmiyahu and we cannot change all of the proper nouns into our fluffy English because that is what the enemy Hasatan the adversary that's what it means as adversary in our translation he is the opponent of Yahweh and in the book of Revelation it says that entity deceives all of the nations. That's why the Messiah says come out of her, come out of Babylon. He who has ears, let him hear the word of Yahweh Shua, Yah's, Yahweh's salvation. The calling of the shofar. It is all about the time that we're in now, which is Shavuot, which is 50 days from the time of Pasach or Passover. My friends, we're in some exciting times, and keep your ears out for His truth. His name, His mitzvot and right rulings, 
and his Shabbat. If you want to find Abba, Abba, the Father, Abba is in the midst of the shit. Shh. Abba t Shabbat. Abba's in the midst of Shabbat. Have fellowship with him through the name of his one and only son, Yahshua of Nazareth, born in the city of bread, Bet Lechem, house of bread. My friends, he's the one returning. But there is another that rules this world. He is the king of this world, the deity of this world. His DBA is in G-O-D, we trust. You know that's his name because it's printed on the money system. What if that money system just happened to collapse? That people, that all of a sudden realize that there is no trust in G-O-D and the monetary system. And we have to trust on Yahweh and His path of righteousness. What is the path of righteousness? It is straight and narrow. And that is Yahshua. And in no other name. He is the resurrected one who is returning. And He ultimately and His his vote, his host, are coming to judge and destroy sin. He cannot be apart. He must come and, if he has a remnant of people that love him and keep his commandments and love his Shabbat and know his name and rejoice and get persecuted by those in the world. So, there it is. Messiah is coming back. And in 2 Thessalonians, which we've done the complete book this week, the shofar, the sounding of the shofar of heaven. Shamayi. Yahweh Tezabot and his Messiah, Yahshua, his salvation. Repent and turn back to